Moog's most economy version of the Moog sort of synthesizer concept. People talk a lot about the Moog Rogue. A lot of people love it, which I think is great. Uh, people tend to also compare it against the MG1. And in a lot of ways, there's really no comparison. The MG1 has a lot more functionality. But that's not to say that the Moog Rogue isn't a great sounding synthesizer, which it is. So I'm just going to dive in and start demonstrating it like I know you'd like me to. All right, the Moog Rogue. Let's start off with Oscillator 1. This is the lowest note possible. We have three different octaves. That is your highest pitch. I suppose you could pitch bend. Sounds like almost an octave, but yeah. And also we've been listening to its sawtooth. We can also switch it to square wave, which has a pretty serious low end, as a square wave often does. Uh, perhaps that is why it is so frequently described as a bass synth or why it was also used as the basis for the Taurus 2 is that it really doesn't have a very high range, which is sort of the same problem with the MG1. If there was one criticism I would have of the MG1 is that it doesn't go low enough, uh, but the row goes deeper, lower frequency wise than the MG1. <laughs> All right, well, uh, and with that, we're done with Oscillator 1. Uh, we do have, okay, over here in the mixer, which I'm just going to have to talk about throughout this whole thing. Uh, we do have the level. Uh, obviously, this slider needs to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, it has this overdrive, which I've heard mentioned a lot, but let's listen. I don't have an oscilloscope in front of me, but I'm not noticing a whole lot of difference that isn't, this just got louder. But perhaps I'm wrong. It's hard to hear any possible change uh, with <laughs> the slider noise. Anyway, still great sounding oscillators, and let's bring in oscillator two. That was an interesting outcome. Uh, let's put it to sawtooth for right now. Okay. You can hear the oscillators beating against each other. Oscillator two and oscillator one share a lot of the same stuff, which is to say you can't, well, you'll see. So our octave switch affects both oscillator one and oscillator two. They do not have independent octave switches. which brings up the waveform switch. Also, we do not have independent control of the waveforms, although uh, when we have it set to sawtooth, it's just two sawtooths. And if I'm right, and this isn't a graphic error, <laughs> uh, well, we can test it. Uh, you, when you switch it to square wave, you get a square wave in oscillator one. And you get a pulse wave in oscillator two. It's not a graphic error. They actually do it. So you actually have three different sort of waveforms to choose from, but there's going to be overlap due to the fact that you have this sort of independent switch situation. Obviously a budget choice, but uh, it, 
kind of extremely limiting, but also not too bad. Oscillator 2's pulse sound. All right. If you're just looking for a simple, great analog sound, obviously that will do. Now, our next thing we're going to talk about is uh, this delightful means to escape at least to some degree, the limitation of the single octave switch, which is your tuning knob for oscillator two has quite a range. Uh, you can see it marked unison and octave. So here's unison. This is what we've been playing in. This has both oscillator one and oscillator two at the 32 foot setting. It appears to go down a little bit, which is just tuning as it would appear. I'm gonna put it on saw so we don't have that really weird thing happening. So there's unison, and then we can, you know, come up with typical synthesizer intervals like. The thing I always call the prog interval. And of course, me always saying, and of course, and of course, if you set it to a different interval and you back one oscillator off, you do have the possibility, the option of creating some harmonic content. Just giving it a slightly different timbre without having it be an interval. So that's kind of an option for creating a more complex wave shape that no one probably talks about. Kind of makes your square wave sound a little bit dirty. Uh, so you can do that, but we have the option of going all the way up in an octave. So oscillator two actually has a higher range than oscillator one because we can jack it up an octave. So that's a little more reasonable high range than octave one or oscillator one. And we can go a bit over that apparently. Sounds like a minor third. So you could, uh, let's hear that. And of course we can again use it as added harmonic content as opposed to an interval. Gives it uh, a raw sort of rough sound. So those that is the uh, interval knob on oscillator two. These oscillators do not seem to line up or stay in the same frequency. Which is to say they have distinctive beating. <laughs> <laughs> 